Good morning, Facebook. Um, this this is nice, nice rainy morning. Uh, I usually, you know, I feel like normally when it rains, it puts me in a bad mood. But for today, some for some reason, it feels more soothing. Like I'm not even sure what that's about, but um, maybe <laughs> just because I'm here with my my friend Brittany, and I'm super excited about this conversation. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, we never get a chance to really talk. I think the last time I seen you was probably the longest conversation we've had since I brought you to my podcast. And that was at um, Central Kitchen. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes, that was. And I, yep, 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 yep. yep. I do remember that. That was probably the longest. So we get to rekindle that today. Yes, absolutely. So I'm super excited. Um, I know I've been getting a few inboxes and comments and people are excited. Um, to listen to your story and ask questions and all that good stuff. So before we start, I'm going to give you um, a couple minutes. I would like you for you to just introduce yourself and kind of tell people what you do. Okay. Um, as Robert said, my name um, is Brittany or B Brown. I am a communications professional where I specialize in public relations under my public relations agency um, known as the B agency. I also do freelance work as well as, um, project-based work for um, an integrated marketing agency um, known as 2050 Partner, Partner, excuse me. And under that realm, it's a whole campaign building, strategizing, building, um, holding the notion of making sure that individuals, businesses, and brands um, understand who they are outside of a website and logo. So that's not something that you rely on, but you understand your full internal self um, from the outside looking in and you're pulling back layers. So I'm also the founder of Becoming Your Brand the University, which is a three-day intensive course um, helping personal brand individuals understand that notion of becoming their brands outside of a website, logo, and social media, and crafting their own pitch. So on a day-by-day -day basis, I'm the person behind the scenes, making sure that your story is told right, um, executing your brand voice, and just making sure that the world knows who you are. Now, now has, has that always been your passion or did you kind of grow into um this role and finding out that you really love helping people kind of figure out who they are essentially so um i always wanted to be a teacher um i always had a knack for um helping people so it kind of still is in the same umbrella in the same wheelhouse but i wanted to be a high school teacher i wanted to teach theater arts Wow. Um, I had some amazing teachers because, of course, I'm from Romulus. Yep, yep, yep. I had to um, see some of the best educators who were like family, and so from that point, I wanted to be a high school I wanted to be a high school teacher, and I went to Eastern. I graduated from Eastern in 2013, and I was introduced to public relations um, through an organization that I helped co-found. It called Fashion Week at EMU. And it was my role to get people to attend the show as well as to get press and media to come out. This was something I've never done before. And I didn't understand the concept of pitching. I didn't understand anything, but I had a lot of connections. I had connections with the radio. I knew how to communicate with people. I knew how to introduce myself. And so I did that. And we had a sold out show. And I remember the actual founder had mentioned to me, you know, you're really good at that. You should look into um, actually public relations. And I of course, it's not something that we ever hear. Um, so I started looking into it, and that's how I was introduced to my mentor now, as well as she's now my partner and my colleague, um, Tatiana Grant. Okay. And from that point on, I just started reading and learning because I didn't, I did not get a degree. I don't have a degree in public relations. Okay. So my degrees, degrees in communications, but um, I just started doing a lot of internships start just paying attention and reading and educating myself a lot and asking a lot of questions. And then I found my agency in 2011 and we're here today. So let's, let's talk about Brittany as like yes. a high school student and, and growing up, like what type of personality did you, do you think like, were you a, were you like the, the center of attention? Were you like kind of laid back? Like what was your personality back then? So I was voted. Um, drama queen of my class. I graduated, <laughs> drama. <laughs> I graduated in um, 2006 and I was, 
I don't think I was a drama queen, but now that I'm a little bit older, you know, you've been in relationships and like you do a lot. Right. I, it was always just something going on. I always knew who, what, where. It was just yeah. like it was always something going on. So, um, I was voted drama queen, so you can take that and do whatever you want to do with that. But, um, I always had my hand in something. I always wanted to be involved. I um helped found um. Romulus step team. So it was just like, I always had a knack for like, let's see how we can create this and bring this to us because it's not here. And then right. I built a lot of connections outside of Romulus in Detroit to where a lot of these people we know now on like larger stages, like Big Sean. So it was just like, I used to do party promotion when he had a, fi uh, Finally Famous was like a party promotion company. A lot of people don't know that. Like it's a party. I, I had no idea. And so I used to help with the promotion side of that. So I just started building my network and increasing, but in twenty in two thousand and five, my mom passed away abruptly, okay. um, and I was getting ready to prepare to go into my senior year in high school, and out the blue, she just passed away. She um had a brain aneurysm, and wow. that's something that definitely I don't even know if, if I mentioned that or if you knew, even knew that. But I knew, um, I knew your mom passed, but I didn't know that it was abruptly from a brain aneurysm. Yeah. So it was just like out the blue. So like. One day she was fine, Saturday, and then Sunday morning, that's when she passed away. And it was, wow. you know, nothing that you can do. So in that moment, I had to learn, I had to make the hardest decision of my life, um, being 17 years old to saying, do I want to keep my mom in a vegetative state or do I want to cut the plug? So I had to make that decision. So it was just you and your mom? So me, my mom, and my dad, but my mom, my mom and my dad, they were not married. So it was just... Yeah. We all were together. To make the decision. Uh, yep. So I I was her only kin, um, close close to kin. So I had to make that decision, and that's not something that I ever imagined in my life that I would have to do. Yeah, who who could imagine that? You can't, like you can't at all. Yeah. So my mom was a very outgoing. Um, she was a social worker. She was an outgoing person. She was the life of the party. Everyone knew her. She actually was a substitute teacher at Romulus too. So it was just like everyone knew her in terms of. Um, how much of a nice person, funny she was. And I wouldn't say that I was like that as a kid. I was a little bit more shy, but not shy. It was really weird. But I believe once she passed away, I embodied a lot of her inside of me. So something sparked in me after she passed away to just like putting some fire behind me, like, mm. let's go, let's go. Yeah. So when I went to college, that's when I kind of really turned it all the way up. So when I went to Eastern, I kind of took um, I took a year off after my mom passed away because I was supposed to go to an HBCU, but my dad didn't want me to go that far away. So I stayed here. I went to Saginaw Valley State for one semester, and then I transferred because I just it wasn't for me. And so I went to Eastern, and I remember I just felt like I was at home, and then I got really heavily involved, and I used to um, – I was – I held leadership roles in certain organizations. Um, and I would say I was not ready to hold those leadership roles in organizations when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people may probably never say that, but I knew like I wanted to be president of Black Student Union. I got elected, but then I was like, I never had a leadership position. So it was like, mm -hmm. I was thinking that the mentality of a leader was being bossy or being, telling people what to do. And it's like, no. So I had to get a little humble humble, humble, humble hustle kind of knocking. Yeah. But when I went to Eastern, that's when things just kind of turned up. And I thank my mom for that because I know that I embody her personality and her mission to, to execute for it. Now, see, my dad passed in 2014 and um, it was by, like, it was sudden. It, it didn't happen the next day, but it happened over the course of about five months where he was golfing perfectly fine like living an active life and then all of a sudden he's in the hospital for four months and the next thing you know he's gone i tell people all the time that as horrible as that was and <clears throat> you don't wish that upon anybody right. um it created a monster like it completely turned me into um a completely different individual do you feel the same way do you feel like that was like the Absolutely. Um, and I would say it was a gift and a curse. Mm -hmm. That goes into when my mom passed away, I never seeked counseling. I never seek therapy. I never talked right. to anyone on a professional level um, because I think people around me, they didn't know what to do and they mm -hmm. just 
Mm-hmm. Like we're just gonna let her do. But I had support, of course. Right. But that crept up to me when I turned thirty, and it okay. hit me like a train. And that's when we went into a deep depression, and anxiety started trickling down. So th- that's when those things started happening. Right. And um. I do believe that it created a monster in a good way and in a bad way. Cause yeah. it's like, okay, let's figure this out because I don't know what path I would have been on if my mom was still here physically. Yeah. Um, if I would have still, if I would have, and it, it developed a mindset in me, like you have to, you got to make sure you're good because you can right. be good any minute. You got to get it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what that showed me. Cause my mom was, she had a lot of life left to live in her, but I just yeah. knew, um, and this is why conversations um, and communication is very important. I knew that if my mom ever got to that point, we had a conversation to where don't ever leave me here to suffer. And that was a conversation she had with me. So I knew what to do when it was that time for her to mm-hmm. transition. So I do think it created a monster, but like a good monster in a way, but also a bad monster. Right, yeah. right. And I know I know a lot of people like, I mean, you're talking, what was that, like 2008? Wow. Yep. That, yep. Around that time, so it wasn't. It wasn't the conversation around anxiety, mental health, oh, no. talking about things that's you know going on. It wasn't a conversation that people were open to having as much as we see that conversation happening now. Oh. And um, I can imagine, like you, like, like where would you even start in trying to sort those things out as an eighteen-year-old, nineteen-year-old? Um, no, we didn't like in my dad, like he didn't know. So he did the he did an amazing job of making sure I was good, making sure that, you know, I didn't lose my mind per se. Mm-hmm. Um but then it was like, okay, we gotta focus on making sure you graduate. We gotta focus because it was like right. you're going through these milestones to where you don't have your mom there. Like at that age, that's when you're kind of getting in the room of learning how to cook, doing yeah. those things, and that I, I didn't have that. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it was taken away. So it was like, it's so many things you have to focus on because it's not just you inside a household, a home by yourself. And you're like, okay, I got to make sure the house is in order. But then I also have to make sure I stay up on my studies in school because right. I don't want people to feel sorry for me. So it was just all those things balancing in one. And it was, it was not a topic of conversation that time as right. it is. Right. No, it's. I think what you um, I, I watch your social and I watch the information that you put out. And I think you do a really good job at bringing light to um, a lot of those things. And I'm sure people look at you like, you know, her her being brave enough to mm-hmm. share and communicate like that gives them that. Yeah, you know, also. I don't always get positive. So I've had people. <laughs> People who know me on a personal level, who've known me my whole life, who've said, you know, be careful when you're mentioning things about going to therapy and getting help because right. people may not want to work with you because they may think you're crazy. Wow. I didn't think about it from that perspective. But then for me, I'm not, I'm just thinking of it as this is my trans, this is my transparency and this is yeah. my truth. And right. I'd rather know that I'm working with someone who is working on themselves to be a whole person just. Instead of, oh, I'm just going to her for this business or this contract, and that's it. 100%. Um, I think everyone in the world should have a the therapist. Everyone should go to therapy once or twice because there's a lot of embedded traumas that we try to pull aside and we try to hide, whatever. And then it comes out in different phases within our lives to where you can't be a good father, you can't be a good wife, you can't be yeah. a good mother. Those things, but that would be something that people would never admit to. Right. And some people may be mad about the stuff that I'm saying, but it's okay. This is how I feel. Hey, 100%. Um, so I'm, very, and if you know me, I'm very transparent. It is right. what it is. But I'm just a very vocal person because I know I'm a part of a generation to where um, we we were built on work till you die. Stay mm-hmm. up until 5, 6 a.m. working on stuff. Um, and I know me and Eric Thomas butt heads on this all the time because I'm like, no, get some rest, take a nap, like do right. all that. But it's, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. But I'm trying to get into the mentality of work smarter and not harder. Mm-hmm. And with that, I I worked myself into like anxiety, taking on projects, taking on clients that I knew like, you know, you, this ain't right for you. Right. And so all that came hitting me at once. And I was like, I know I'm not the only person that feels this way, especially with a lot of 
people that are in my generation who are entrepreneurs who are trying to figure it out because there's no real handbook on entrepreneurship besides like laying your yeah. business foundation down but not like the mental nobody talks about the mental the social distancing which we got to do now but right. prior to that we've been doing that if you're a full-time entrepreneur and you're working at starbucks by yourself for eight hours so right. nobody really talked about that so that's why i wanted to be an advocate and a voice on saying it's okay to say i'm not right it's okay to say i feel like i'm losing my mind i think i need to talk to somebody because that prevents people from um suicide that's that mm -hmm. prevents from doing things that are harming themselves or family members. So that's why I wanted to be vocal in terms of, hey, I know a lot of people look up to me in terms of business, but I want you to understand that I am just not my business. I am a human and I right. go through stuff too, as I know people do. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and when you when you go as hard as you were going and we're on the outside looking in, you do create um, the invincible persona. Like she's a unbreakable. <laughs> Everybody thinks you a super woman. And that's yeah. when it's like, you're the strong one. You got it. I can throw all this at you. Yeah. And I, in my mind, I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's not a problem. But yeah. then eventually you be like, no, nah, hold on. I haven't ate. I haven't slept. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Just, you working, and that's when your work becomes sloppy, and it's not cool. It's no. I, I know Um, I read a book by a guy named Tim Ferriss about maybe four years ago. And um, in this book, he he talked about, the book had nothing to do with mental health, but mm -hmm. he was talking about um, ways to be more productive. Mm -hmm. And the, the book was called Four Hour Work Week. And inside that book, he basically outlines how we can only really um, perform at our maximum output for about four hours over the course of the day. Anything beyond that is actually we're not giving a hundred percent. And then that even declines further when you have things pulling from you like family or, um, you know, parents or stress or somebody dies or like all these things, your mental capacity and creative box is just like a gas tank. And the more you use it, it will run dry. <laughs> you can't produce a hundred percent if you're not, mentally and physically operating at a hundred percent it's simple math and i learned that so many occasions i wasn't paying attention but then when i started paying it's like you like how can you it's simple math like if you not real well rested you can't you can't it doesn't make sense so absolutely i would definitely believe in the four and i will definitely look into that book because i am a strong advocate against work till you die yeah yeah. If it's not done, close your laptop. You ain't got it right now. It's okay. Yep. And 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 I you know I have to like yeah. part of my DNA is um just like you said, like I grew up in that mindset of watching my dad work nonstop. You know, he worked to yeah. get up at four o'clock in the morning, work until five, six PM, sleep for a couple hours, get up and do the, you know, rinse and repeat over and over again. So like I seen that that's my DNA. However, um, I learned real fast that when it's time to rest, it's, it's time to rest. And I might go 15 hours one day, but the next day I might sleep until two o'clock. And the beauty to me of entrepreneurship is that we choose. Yes. Like, <laughs> like we have mm -hmm. complete control. And I think when you're, when you're being dictated by a society who creates mm -hmm. a perception that as an entrepreneur, all you're supposed to do is work and hustle and grind and these things. If that's dictating your daily activity, then you're going to be in a bad spot. Like you're creating an image that you won't be able to maintain. And so it has to be in your D DNA for sure. You'll be irritable. You'll be annoyed. Yeah. Um, it'll just be, it won't be right. It's just like if you're a tired, if you're a toddler, they need naps. Yes. They don't get naps. <laughs> They're gonna yeah. like. This. I got a three-year-old that, I, that like, can, I can definitely like. attest. <laughs> if you yeah. don't have that, you're gonna be so irritable. So absolutely. Yeah. So so, at what point did you decide to do your own thing? Like, when did when did the B agency kind of come to life? In um 2011, my junior my junior year of college. Um, I have no idea where it came from. I never thought that I was gonna be a full time entrepreneur. Um, one day I used to always sit in the computer lab at Eastern 
And I remember I said, you know what? I'm going to make my own public relations agency. And it's going to be called the B Agency. And I remember I, I remember the exact computer I was sitting at. And I was on a Microsoft Word document. And I just started typing out my business plan. And then that's when I started doing things a little bit here here and there freelance. I was not getting paid. That's when I got... Um, I used to just be on top of things in terms of like the newest trends, the newest clothing lines. And that's when I got introduced. Well, I always knew Tommy, Tommy Walker, BBE, because mm-hmm. um, I knew of his graphic work from a long time ago. From right. him. <clears throat> So I just, I was always the one telling people like, oh, you need to look into this person, like Mia Ray. Like I knew about Mia Ray like a long time ago. So I was like, y'all don't know about Glamaholic? Like I just always knew the trends and what to like parties to go to. Like I always just was always just in the know. And so I was like, how can I connect this to becoming something to where I can be that voice and just connecting everybody. You, to you've been a public relations specialist your whole life. essentially. Since I've been in high school and I did not know it because in high school I got us placed on, um, what was it? WJLB when like Dr. Darius was like, that was when he was first on WJLB like a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In college, I got us placed on Fox 2 News for the fashion show. And it's just like, I did not know. Like, I was pitching. Then I was just like, oh, let me just find an email. And let me right. just, I know I'm a good, I'm good with words. And I right. can tell, I can make something glitter and gold and all of that. And I just been, I've been being a publicist my whole life. Yeah, that's, that's super dope. And like, I, obviously I'm in that world a little bit. Like our worlds overlap. And yeah. I don't, I don't know anybody that does a better job at, like you, the way you introduce your clients, I know that's an important piece to your puzzle, but I just feel like you do it in a way that makes the, it makes us want to go look them up and find out who is this brand? What are they about? And you know, how can I support them? So with public relations and just so everyone can know out there, I didn't just graduate from college and then jump to like the BHC and start making all this money. No, I worked corporate jobs. Um, I was doing like, nine to five and then six to nine. Like I was mm-hmm. doing it back and forth until the point where I was like, you know, I don't want to request any more time off to go to a client event. So I'm not right. choosing anymore. Didn't have any savings. Don't do that. But that's a whole nother topic for the whole nother day. <laughs> but I remember when I started researching publicists because commonly publicists are the behind the scenes. We are not supposed to be in the forefront of camera. We're supposed to do our job and get out the way. Yeah. Um, It really wasn't, especially in Detroit, we're automotive and political city. So that's what a lot of press and media and things of that nature were surrounded around. And so I just started paying attention to things. And this was at the time of the bankruptcy. Um, And this is when the budding of DVE came about. And I was like, it was so many negative stories in the press about Detroit and how we're selling houses for $2 and it's nobody's, you know, that's when all that stuff was going on. Right. I was just like, I want to be the person to start highlighting individuals who are actually in the city because it was a, that's the boom of the millennials moving back to the city of Detroit and downtown because we were working at Quick End, we were working somewhere. Right. And I'm like, these people are dope. Like, I want to start sharing those stories in terms of the amazing things that they do. And so I started developing the mindset of I need to start creating my own press for my clients because we depend on press media outlets to highlight our clients. And I was like, well, I can do that too. So I'm going to have a creative way to introduce my clients embedding their pitch with a beautiful picture. And then it's going to make you want to go find this person. But then at the same time, I had to gain the trust of everyone else because I was trying to do something new. So I wanted people to trust in my story and my not even expertise but I just wanted you to trust and that I knew what I was doing. You can trust me. So then that's when I started pitching myself as a publicist, which was something that was so taboo. Right. And it was like, I, it was just it was yeah. so much. It was a lot, some backlash and it got to the point where, you know, this was the time people were getting like articles written about them and started right, right. Things for publicists. And I got a lot. And it's really a conflict of interest because it looks like, if this journalist is writing about a publicist, then that means that publicists can easily pitch to you and you're always automatically always going to get placements. Oh, I got it. But for me, I was just like, well, I'm taking something and shaking it up because, and and I could be wrong, I, I did not see a lot of people in the industry who were young, who were black, 
um, who were under 30 at the time that were focusing on people as the brandable point. Right. And so that's when I was like, well, people got to understand how to become their brands while pitching themselves or their product or service. So that's how to become your brand came yeah. something that I trademarked. And then I built the course. And then that's kind of how everything just started. And then that's why you see those client introductions the way you do. Because I tell people, like, when you're with me, um, we're going to create our own press. And we have relationships with press. So they would know I'm not going to just send you just you have to have a story. You have right. to have something that's like out of this world to where it's right. like, okay, that's, oh, I can do something with that. And I want the world to know that you're amazing at what you do. Right. So you, you, you created, um, you created a standard and a, and a criteria for people to even be connected to you <laughs> in the first place. So, um, listen, if you're just joining in, I'm talking, um, to Brittany owner of the, the B agency, um, PR specialist, publicist, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And if you have any questions for her, I see a lot of people chiming in, e Eric Thomas, John Neely, um, Stacy Walker, Jay Success. Good if you have any questions or comments you want to add to the conversation, make sure you drop them in the comments. We'll definitely get to them before um, we get done talking. And I think um, the, I know a piece of it, like the beauty of my story is a lot of people have seen when I was just like grinding out in the beginning. Like John Neely saw me when I was like, I think I worked one of his doors collecting money. Like I used to like be yeah. adorable. Like, I used to like whatever it is. I was you like, done, oh, you've done it. You've done I it all. Done it all. And yeah. I was like young. Right. And it was just like everybody knew like if Brittany there is going to be in tip top shape. Right. It's not going to be no, no game. So I just started building that reputation of like, when you work with me, we gon' it's gonna be to a whole different caliber, and we gon' we gon' it's gonna be a tight ship. So that's why I think people always people always come into the story when the groundwork and the foundation and the hard part of it has already been done, and they look at the success that you are um, yeah. you're getting at that moment, and it's like I want to be that, but everybody yeah. want to skip like working the door, working like. Um, the clients for free doing, you know, some of that pro bono work that you probably had to do. Man, like, and and it is a, it is, it is a trend now because people see the photo shoots, they see the awards, they see all of that, but they don't see the me having to coordinate an interview in less than 20 minutes right? Um, for two clients or me um, having, while in college, having to go through like not knowing how I'm going to pay my rent and doing resumes so I can get enough money just to like pay a light bill. Like people right. don't see that part. Right. And that's a part of my journey and my story. So it did not happen overnight. I did not just pop up on the scene. Cause some people thought I was like, came out of nowhere. Like I just popped up on the scene. It was like, Oh, I was like, no, I've been building relationships since I've been in high school. Right. And now a lot of these people who I've built relationships with, they're, multi-millionaires they own these larger companies and corporations and i can call them because relationships are key within right. my whole storyline so my success is just not my success my success has been built with a whole generation like a whole team of us so everybody who has watched me supported me that's that's what means the best that's that's my story and that's who i am and that's why i tell people like you got to become your brand at the end of the day because they can take they can take every single word, every single honor that I've ever gotten, but I will still be able to tell you who I am, um, tell you I can get the work done even without any accolades. Right. And I know um, <clears throat> even even in evolution, like when it comes to when it comes to building your brand and having, you know, I, I hate to use the word small business, but having a, a brand that's smaller than yeah. other brands where you're carrying like the bulk um, other responsibility, you know, even in success, there's still challenges because like, you know, like me and Eric, you bring Eric up, me and Eric talk about this. Like you can have, you can have 20, 30, 40 clients and then have a moment where no one's paying their invoices. You know, it's like 60, 90, 120 days, um, past due and you know, it's coming, but you're on their clock to some degree. You don't know. Like we can, yeah. To, we can all write a book about it. We yeah. can write a movie about it. It's a lot of things that people do not see. Um, and it, like even like right now, yeah. it's like 
some of some of us like, try to get unemployment because yeah. yeah. I don't know. So it's just like we're all not on the same level playing field. And that's what I like to say. And I was like, well, we've been doing this the whole time. So right. hey, welcome to the party. Right, right. Just yeah, just that, just that uncertainty of like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. your your bill is your your invoice is due on the first, and now yeah. it's the 15th, and then now it's the 30th, and you know. It's the nature. Of, it's the nature of the beast, and we 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 learn how to work with it and 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 pivot and um, make the adjustments that we need to make or whatnot. Absolutely. So so moving forward, like moving in um into the future, what's some mm-hmm. of the things that you're thinking about? Um, obviously following COVID nineteen and how the world will look a lot different um mm-hmm. than it did before COVID nineteen. What's some of your thoughts? Um, <clears throat> a lot of of course, we know the virtual market is about to explode. So a lot of education in that realm. But for me, in terms of the public relations realm, it's a lot of restructuring and remodeling and rebuilding your brand voice of what you're doing to adjust and to still serve your client or your target base. That's going to be very much so key, um, as well as understanding your messaging, understanding how you're communicating with clients, understanding what they need right now to make their life a convenience. Um, And so for me, it's definitely like a lot of, I had to do like strategy meetings with each one of my clients to say, okay, what, 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 who's your target? Let's redefine that. What are they dealing with right now? Do they have, do they have access to essentials? Um, Do they have access to your product? If they don't, how can we make this work? But I think the normal normalcy of how, we operate and move is going to be totally different. So like events, I do a lot of events. That's out. We're done. For 2020, you're done. So it's now me reshifting my mindset as well as my client's mindset. Because I have some clients who are not so, they're like, I don't want to focus on COVID. Right, right. I get it. Right. I get it. But people are still going to be a little, they're going to be on edge for right. about a whole year. Um, So just having the serious conversations in reference to retargeting, redefining and restructuring the business model, um, your pitch, because literally I was, I'm working with a client to where we were focusing on one thing and then it had to shift into another. And we had to merge the two into one to make it pitchable because I have to pitch with empathy now because I can't just say, Oh, this yeah. beauty brand is the, you know, it's like people yeah. are not having income. Yeah, kind of that. Let's, let's, let's track back. So it's just, I think the future is just being more honest of what's going on, redefining who your client is, who you want to communicate that to, um, and how are they receptive messaging. And that's going to be another thing because a lot of us are not driving the cars. A lot of us are not out and about. So it's like, how? what are you investing in your marketing budget? How is it all going to coincide and go hand in hand? Because that all goes into one. So it's just a real relaying of the foundation, as I would say. Right. Um, or someone who's in my field. So, so from your standpoint in in deciding what clients are a good fit for you um, moving forward, like how does does this change um, some of the, the clients that you would have possibly brought on board, or like what are you looking for when you when you're thinking about ideal clients right now? Well, right now it's. Just the notion of understanding who's providing an essential for a certain target right now. Right. And they, can they have access to what you're selling or what you're giving or what whatever? Like, can they have access to that? So if I had a client who's like, oh, I'm having an event for Cinco de Mayo and it was outside, if they have no structure in terms of they already have a phone, it's like, It's I can't per se work with someone who is I'm a new startup and I want people to know about this product that we're selling. Right. It's kind of like like in a building phase and it's not really a good fit for you. It's it's not a good fit because right now a lot of press and media are looking for shifting the narrative of positive stories. Who's doing what to make sure that our lives are as normal as possible. And that's my job to put my roster and see, okay, who has this going and how can we merge this and saying, okay, I can restructure this and right. then rebuild it this way. And so that's kind of 
the operation mode that I have to go into. Um, I'm still definitely down for coaching and consulting, but you just have to be mindful. If you're introducing a new product that may be over a thousand dollars, how is this affecting me right now in the state of COVID-19 and my, our new normalcy? Is yeah. this helping me to operate from home if I have to work at home? Is this operating me to take care of my kids? It's like, what are the major issues and components of voids right now that need to be filled? And that's how I'm kind of structuring who um, may be an ideal client. But it's also my job when consulting or when pitching myself on why you should work with me is how I can help you get to that point of you understanding how we can pivot that as well. That makes so much sense. So, like, basically, you have to understand where the media's focus and attention is just as much as you need to understand what the client um, is actually trying to accomplish. So, like, I already had to do that, but now it's on a whole different level because you're seeing the trends of in the beginning, a couple of months ago, was reporting the numbers, how many people have passed away, how to get testing. It was right. their job was letting letting us know how we can protect ourselves. Now it's how do we re we're getting back to readjusting to going outside. So who do I have on my roster that has a product or a service that can help someone right. um, when they go back on the outside or education right now? If you have an education client, you should be pitching them like crazy mental health. Right. What? Because right. I'm paying attention to how many people have committed suicide since they've been in in um stay home order. Do right. I have something on my roster to where they've implemented something, a service, or they're given something for free that right. can target those individuals. So I have to be on it from two different angles. Yeah. So it is, it is, I've never been, I've been challenged before, but this is a different type of challenge because it's people's lives at stake here. Yeah. Every single level. So I have to just make sure I'm, I'm doing things that make sense. And I'm recommending things that make sense for both my client as well as who we're um, reaching out to. That that's that's actually I think I get this question all the time. I'm sure you get it too, but a lot of people don't really understand the difference between like say what I do in terms of being a social media agency and paying more attention to like branding and messaging as it relates to the general population. Mm -hmm. And I could care less about what the media outlets think to some degree, okay. just from my perspective. Yeah. And yes, yeah. Exactly. And I think that's the best way to put it. Like you have to be concerned to some degree of what they think and what stories they're looking for so yeah. that you can craft messaging or present clients that make sense for their channels, their outlets or whatever um, that platform is. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a really good way to define like how we differ to some oh. degree in our, uh, in our worlds. For yeah. a person that don't know, for a person that's not knowledgeable. Yes. And another point to that is if anybody is out there in the market to actually promoting or getting a publicist on your roster, investing in that, make sure you have somebody that can creatively pitch. Because literally right now, I've I literally pitched a story to a news outlet. That was not something that they were going to report on. But because I'm intuitive to seeing what target has not been focused on. So high school students have not it's not a lot of light that's been shed on them right now because a lot of people are focused on adults because right. they're the people's lives who really stop. But then it's like, but high school students or students in school have stopped because they can't graduate. They can't go to prom. Right. Education milestones have been missed out. Um, and it's a smaller, it's a smaller rate of individuals who are in high school or elementary school who are sad. They can't see their friends. They can't go to their teachers. Yeah. So that's when I had to think of a creative way to say, Hey, I don't know if you've all thought about this story, but this, these are the numbers. I have a client who has a mental health, who are now offering mental health services for their whole student body. Let's see how this can work. And yeah. it got here. So just look into that, making sure that you can ask them, like, have you ever creatively pitched before? If so, can I see it? So, right. right. I love it. So what, what do you think? Do you think, you know, when it's all said and done for you and, you know, you you are trying to figure out what you are the most passionate about. Do you mm -hmm. think the becoming your brand the education piece eventually kind of takes over or do yes. you think you will always be? So you do think you're moving in that direction? I'm definitely moving in that direction Um, just because I'm seeing. People just want a peace of mind and they want to know, like, am I doing this right? 
Right. And I remember that feeling. I would never tell anybody I know every single thing. Right. I do not. I feel like I my passion is becoming the educational factor and the saying, how can I help you not make the same mistakes that I made or that seven other people made that we look up to as entrepreneurs and how can we put that out there? And not just entrepreneurs. If you work still for corporate, if you work a full-time job, all of that goes under the same realm, but definitely the educational becoming your brand piece because um, I know that course has changed a lot of people's lives yeah. um, on a personal as well as on a business level. And it's something that I'm like the most proud of. And it's just, I know it's changed. Like it's, every time I had, I do the class, it's the best three days of my life for that whole, like that whole year. That's, that's awesome. What you, 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 yeah. So of all the successes, you've had a ton of successes, clients, um, whether it's a monetary, whether it was a monetary deal, whether it just was a, a satisfying feeling, whether it was a situation that kind of put you on the map, like what stands out? Um, over your career as a thing that you are most proud of? That class. The class. And I, say, and I say that because I have people in the class who I know on a personal level. Mm. But it's it's turned off. And I'm able to see you from the first day to where on the third day, you have that confidence in knowing I'm my brand and I'm a, I'm a the world needs to know about me. This is my story. This is how I'm going to execute out. And then I'm sitting back and I'm looking at all of my students online, like getting these awards, sitting on panels with me, writing books. Right. It's, that is the most fulfilling for me sure. because I know that I did something to making someone else feel good about themselves and out and living out their dreams. Right. And I, and I, I'm one of the most humblest people in the world, but like that class, like, I, you know, have you ever done something? He was like, dang, like, I didn't even know. Like, I, every time, like, the first time I did the class, and, like, people cry in my class. And I, yeah. like, because the concept and the notion of, like, pulling back layers and my whole methodology of how I have it down packed to how I do that and the exercises that I've crafted, mm -hmm. it's out of this world. And, like, I, it, it helped me transform to the person that I am today. And it's just that it's that class. I'm able to like teach over a hundred people to date. And I'm looking at them like just running off. And you don't need to say, they don't need to say thank you. They don't need to. Right. I, that's all I need. Yeah, you're, for, you're forever a part of their story. Like that's. I'm always in, imprinted in their blueprint and their DNA. That's, that's, that's super dope. So now everybody that watches this is going to want to know how they can look into the class and, and, and get involved. What's the process? Like, how do you decide who um, who gets to take it? So we play off the university thing. Um, it's not an actual building. That's a university. It's a, you know, I love branding. So it's called Becoming a Brand University. And we play it off as you apply. Um, we keep it to a very intimate um, session. So I only allow 10 students in the course. And it can be over 50 applicants or 100 applicants. And we narrow it down. And we ask certain questions because we just want to make sure that you're a right fit because we don't want people to be on one higher level and a lower level. Like we want everyone to feel comfortable in the space that they're in because with the the science of why it's only ten people, it means uh, it's a reason behind that. And yeah. you find that out on the like the third day, like when you go through the course, it makes sense. Yeah. And so I we go through a very rigorous process of going over the applications. And then once you're accepted, you get your acceptance letter and then you get the details of the class. And it's three days. It's a mandatory three days. It's not one or two. It's you, you have to attend every single third day, every single day. And then you just put your trust in me for the next for those three days. And I guarantee it will change your life. And it's so I think for me, when I had people that flew from like Virginia or California. It's just, that's what was wow. like, wow, okay. Yeah, you got something. Yeah, it's like, oh, I got to really um, yeah. do my job. Because I just, I think of people like you invested, like you bought a plane ticket, you got a hotel, you had to pay for lodging. Because I know when I travel, that's when my mind right. is. I, right. I don't ever want to waste somebody's time. Right. So I got to be on it. Even if you drove from Ypsilanti to the class, that's right. gas. Just spent that gas on something else. So I always am mindful of that. So right. 
is uh do you have one coming up or is there a date for the next one yet well that's pending with the beautiful covid um because cool. i'm an in-person type of girl right right um, you don't want to do the virtual thing <laughs> but i'm sure i'm gonna have to do the virtual thing i'm um the whole concept of the class and but i can pivot it's okay yeah um so it's typically um in october so Got it. Now it's October. We don't release the dates until we release the application, um, just so it can be a fair playing field. But it will be in October, and we do send out the application. We make it live in September. Got it. Got it. It's on our website. So the last thing I want to spend our last ten minutes talking about um, is uh, an article or a video that I seen from you, where you you basically. Um, again, being super vulnerable and basically saying that um, you you went into a, you you got into a mindset that you shouldn't have gotten into, and it it kind of hurt you a little bit and how you kind of reset and shifted, um, you know, your thought process. Do you know the, the what I'm talking about? The last podcast. Yeah, the last. Okay, so can can you elaborate on that a little bit? Now let me tell. I was everybody was like, you was really you let it all out on the table on that i let it yeah. all out and i was coming off of so on the podcast i say 2019 was the worst like one of the worst years of like my career personal since my mom passed right um and it goes to i was just running on empty films okay and it was just like this this don't even make sense like what am i doing and so i hit rock bottom and I found myself having anxiety attacks. I found myself um, just like, I need to shift. Oh, it kind of tie into what you were talking about earlier. Yep. So that's that's what that was that moment. So it was like from September and going past that, it was just whatever higher power you believe in, it was ch- telling me, you need to sit down because I'm going to knock you down. Mm-hmm. And I got knocked down. So that's when I had to reshift and adjust some stuff. I had to get a new therapist. I had to start looking at myself in a mirror again, because of course I did that when you're going to continuously have to do this every phase within your life, when you become a wife, when you become a mother, when you be, you're always going to have to like reevaluate yourself. So this was the second phase of me looking at myself like, okay, there are certain things within me that I don't like in terms of how I'm operating, how I'm communicating, um, what I'm giving off. And it was like, it wasn't just right for me. And I just was like, I have to just strip it all down. As I tell my students, I pull back them layers and I had to pull back those layers. And that's when I started becoming very, very transparent on right. my journey through my anxiety, um, my journey through my um, depression. And I really didn't care what people thought. Right. I was just like, look, I'm proud of myself. Um, I find an amazing therapist and she's walking me through things and I'm really doing exercises in the steps and I had to take a break from business. Like the BHC was like on um, pause. Yeah. Um, And I had to make some very tough decisions on what I wanted to do. And I had a conversation, God rest his soul, with um, Marlo Sotomar, who recently um, passed away. He's one of my mentors. And um, I joined, I was able to have the opportunity to um, become a team member of 2050 Partners, which is a um, integrated marketing agency owned by him and Tatiana Grant. And I got to the point where I was like, I need to be challenged more. I need to learn more. And that's why I was like, I need to put the B agency on pause for a minute because yeah. I'm trying to figure it out. And I had to become so vulnerable where I had to go to my mentors and have certain conversations with my board of directors. And I was like, I'm not at a good place. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what's going on with me. Right. So that's kind of a, nip, a, nip, a quick quick snippet of what I said on that podcast. I didn't even, I was saying it all. Yeah, I, mean, I was about to say, and I, and I think um, I think I actually read just a caption mm-hmm. um, that you put out and kind of like a, you know, a explanation or a summary of how you were moving into that. But I think that story is important. Um, and the reason I saved it for last is because I think it's important for people who are in this situation right now where, mm-hmm. you know, they're mentally in a bad place or, you know, they, they've they been going through things. They're not unsure of who they are, how their business is going to respond. And uh, I think the way you've been able to pivot and it, clearly you're in a much better place now. And um, that kind of 
speaks volumes to what it how important it is to be transparent and to communicate and how you know don't be worried about what people think like you're going to be in a much healthier spot if you um embrace your truths to some yeah. degree yes absolutely and even with that i know a lot of people look up to me mm -hmm. Or look to me for advice. So I was like, look, let's take a pause back because mm -hmm. I'm only giving you business, 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 where it's like, I'm not right mentally. So I'm gonna tell y'all this too, and this is why I'm telling you. If you don't like it, it's okay. I respect yeah. that. But yeah. I always tell people, like, be gentle with yourself. And I learned that um from Tony Jones, who always just tell me, like, be gentle with yourself. And that it resonates and it means so much because a lot of us, especially entrepreneurs, we mm -hmm. are very hard on us because we have to be hard because we like we got to we got check it chase the tech i get this right. but eventually it's all gonna work out if it needs to work out it's all gonna work out if it's, it's for you it's going to be for you it's going to be handed to you Wonder. Hard though, but. <laughs> right so how can uh what's the best way for people to connect with you if they're looking for um, consulting or advice or becoming your brand or any of those things that you've talked about Yes, yeah, so um, you can reach me um, at the email pr at the bagency.com. Um, as well as I'm very active on social media, Instagram, um, B E E Brown PR. And my website is the spelled out T H E B E E agency um, dot com. Super dope. Uh, it's, it's been so refreshing talking to you. Um, uh, I didn't expect to get into like the therapeutic. Um, stuff as much as we did, but I feel like it's been therapy for me, like listening to you um, yeah, tell those stories. And so uh, I appreciate this hour and uh, let's let's do it again soon. Let's not wait so long to have one of these conversations. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. You have a great rest of your day. I'm going to talk to you soon. You too. All Bye. Right. Bye. Hey, so that wraps up our 33rd episode um, of these conversations to keep you going every single day. Um, we try to talk to inspirational, motivational people, people that I've admired from afar, who I haven't been able to catch up with. Um, and uh, the, the goal is to drop some practical nuggets, information, um, tell stories that maybe can help us benefit or get through um, some things that we might be dealing with. If there's anybody that you feel like I should kick it with, Fib, please um, shoot me a message, send me an email, drop a comment. Let me know who you like to see, and uh, we'll do our best to have a conversation with them. All right, everybody, keep your head up. Enjoy your Thursday afternoon, and um, keep going. All right, it's your boy Robert Corden. Peace.